We have a statistic from Stats Canada, and it's that 15-year-olds, when they're taking an international test and scoring very high in the math, the girls that are scoring so high and you would predict they would do very well in uh, a STEM field, only 23% of those girls are entering into a STEM field or science technology related field. Whereas of those young men, there's 46%. Uh, so it's really half. Uh, do you guys have any idea, uh, anything to, to see why that is happening? Because there's no clear answer for why that's happening. From like a young age, we're usually told uh, sciences like math and physics are really more for men and like men dominated. So as you grow up, like you always kind of have that image in the back of your head like, oh, it's kind of more a manly like profession. I don't want to kind of be seen as like a more masculine figure, even though like math and physics or whatever you're studying should be like available to everyone. Some that come with the with the stereo stereotypical things that uh, people think about women. And I think uh, there are unconscious barriers too. So, uh, for example, there are a lot of uh, men, you know, that are in uh, physics and electrical engineering were uh, three girls in my program. So, yeah, we're not a lot of girls. So, yeah, we're a little bit discouraged um, from the beginning. To uh, pursue those in those fields, but um, uh, Eliana and I went to a all-girl high school, so we were really um, uh, pushed to go in science and encouraged, encouraged, sorry, to go in uh, math and physics and chemistry, and we were never really held down. But so I think it really depends on how you were raised. And to add to that, I would say that. Um, also now, like the classical vision of a scientist is a man with a lab coat. So e even if like, um, in, in school you're good at math or physics, and then you look up to see uh, who you could become when you don't have those uh, role models uh, who you could identify with, that can also um, shift you from what you really wanted to be. And I think to finish, I'd say that it also has to do with confidence because um, my mom, for example, attended this event it was like uh, for like women in the job market to like be more confident and it was like said over and over that like, yeah, women are just like not as confident as men and just they might be qualified and, and, and you know, be able to do the, the job but just like don't think they can. And so it's like a whole process of trying to like making them believe that yes they can and like um, you you shouldn't have you should be assertive about like everything you should like feel that you can do it and you should also show it I think we're super encouraged and we talk about it a lot and we're aware that women do have a place in STEM, but I think it can be scary when you see further up, moving on from your undergrad to your master's, to your PhD, and your postdoc, that there's less and less women, and there's reasons why, and a lot of them will talk about work-life balance that can be harder, women being put upon way more administrative work than men, and then spending more time doing that than doing their own research, and I think it can be discouraging and scary that you, were, like, you know you'll be stuck with those disadvantages going on. Yeah, I think it depends on like, the stage you are, uh, but definitely there's this whole thing that obviously we're biologists and, like made so that we like make kids, for example. <laughs> and so like you kind of have already a biological disadvantage because it's never going to be a, a guy who's going to have to do that, and he's never going to have to like go like leave for maternal uh, purposes and stuff like that. And so I think one of the important things should be that there should be. Um, like a compensation for these things and that shouldn't have uh, an impact on your career because you you know you went on a leave and then you didn't publish for like seven months. Um, and so that's something that I think should be taken into account. And um, you come to the point sometimes when like family for you seems like something that will uh, prevent you from being successful. So like 
I personally want to do research, but like kind of in the back of my mind, to me, family is like something very, very far because it's something that takes time and um, because also societies had sort of sometimes expects you to be the one taking more obligations and responsibilities in that sense, then you feel that you have this double job of like being, having a career, being so successful, and also having to be a mother, I guess. You're uh, constantly asking yourself if you want to continue because it's uh, sometimes uh, a bit hard to be in that kind of environment. But um, I really wish I could continue doing research because that's really what I love. And um, yeah, t talking about um, uh, work-life balance, uh, during my undergrad, I actually uh, uh, was looking up to a professor which was, uh, who was really passionate about teaching evolution. It was really like him that uh, convinced me that I, I should continue in that uh, path. And so I went to see him at the end of my undergrad and I was asking him for advice. And so uh, he just told me, oh, you know, like you really have to work really hard. And uh, I'm sorry to tell you that, but you can just like forget about the family life because it's not like what you will uh, succeed in academia with. And so I was, I was in my undergrad, so I was like not really thinking about the family or anything. I was just, yeah, I'll, I'll see, like maybe that will be it. So I continued uh, with my master. And then I talked with a, a postdoc who just had uh, twins and that was just doing great. And that told me, oh, you know, like a lot of people will tell you different things about what you can't do. But I really just don't listen to them and you should like, go for it. And yes, it won't be easy sometimes, but uh, if you really want to do it, like just do it and, and, and do it. So. I, it's weird to say, but like all the negativity I receive from my classmates just kind of motivates me to push and like just prove them wrong by not outdoing them or anything, but just proving to them like I know I could do just as well as you guys and we all entered because we're all good and I'm not just going to leave because you all tell me negative things all day. And it's just weird coming from like an all girls school as Gabriel was saying that every day we were told like oh women like that you see to feel nice is very important and we need a lot of women in science and you guys can do this at like he said, bad bunny papa, they used to like write out on our exams every day. Oh. They'd be like, okay, like we got this. <laughs> to come kind of to like a school where when you tell people like, oh, I'm in physics, they're like, oh yeah, prove it. And it's a little insulting like to have to prove to yourself like that you're really studying something that you love. Sometimes when some people hear that I'm in electrical engineering, they're super surprised. <laughs> and, and, I'm glad, but at the same time, I don't know if, if it's supposed to be insulting or <laughs> if it's supposed to be good or bad, you know. So I, I'm still like glad of their reactions and I, I'm proud to uh, prove them that women can do it. Mm -hmm. We have this initiative at McGill that's called Diversity in STEM. And so basically it aims at really promoting any type of diversity, whether it's like sexual orientation, uh, ethnic background, or women, um, disabled people too. And I think that's definitely something that's very important and it is really missing out um, in the biology department, I guess I'd say. Um, I think things are changing towards women because, for example, we just had three new faculty members who are female, so I think that's a really good thing. But definitely in terms of like ethnic backgrounds, it's pretty bad. Like, um, I have like I'm I have a diff diverse ethnic background, but there's not a lot of dark skin uh, people in as an undergrad. Um, I think there's only one in the biology department as a grad student, um, and there's a professor. So I think that's really, like, that tells a lot. I don't think there is, like, not enough qualified people in Canada who could be able to get a faculty position. So I think that's something that should definitely be improved. I think it's uh, always important to have different types of role models, and so representation is a really good way for people to also feel welcomed in that field and encouraged to pursue uh, what they're interested in. I feel very privileged because my parents let me do what I want to do, but uh, 
it is true that like sometimes when you at least yeah, in biology, in ecology, and evolution, when you try to explain what you're doing, and that people don't see how it can matter to, or how you can apply it to society, um, like it's it's really hard, yeah, to to justify what you're doing. Um, when you develop an interest towards, especially in our field, like biology and research, research. I felt when I was in high school wasn't really a thing, and then if you wanted to do an undergraduate degree in biology, it's like, okay, now yeah, you want to be a doctor. And then if you're like, no, that's not what I want to do, I really want to do research, people don't see the practical side of it, and being a doctor is way more practical, and you're going to save lives, and like, yeah. But I feel like you are more discouraged and not aware of the field and what you can do with it. Yeah, there's so many options and so many things that you can become that it's hard to know all of them and know all of your options and exploit them. Just to talk about it, like regularly, um, issues about women and diversity in sciences, it's super important. And you cannot, you cannot make the people change from one day to another. So like, talk regularly about it, talk about the issue. It's already like something uh, really important. And, already a big step, it's about uh, change. I think that uh, mentorship programs are good too, because I know that at Polytechnic we have a mentorship program where you can like be allied with an uh, older girl than you and ask her questions about her experience and if you're doing a like a, yeah, a graduate school, uh, you can talk to someone who's already in the field to ask your question about uh, you know how you balance family and work and stuff like that and I think it it really helps because even now I'm <coughs> I'm asking myself questions of how I'm gonna do it mm -hmm. yeah. just say that what's important is just like hard work and and your uh, skills but it has nothing to do with your ethnic background whatever type of background you have that's like great uh, for you as a person but it doesn't have any with your actual job, I guess. Um, and in areas where like they're already like disadvantaged, you can talk about like socioeconomic groups. Uh, there definitely should be more like active uh, clients that try to target these people and uh, give them the chances to be part of this. Uh, I think we would need a kind of break the stigma. Like let's say um, from a young age, we're kind of taught like oh, sciences and everything more masculine is more for guys. Like, if you think of, let's say, like, nurses or teaching, it should be more for girls, because girls are seen more as, like, well, in my opinion, like, uh, like as if we're warm and, like, flowers or something. <laughs> <laughs> and guys are more, like, tools and this and that. So I think, like, when you're kind of already raised and born in a society that thinks that way, like, everyone just grows up and doesn't, evolve like all together so you never kind of break the stigma but I think like if from a young age you tell children like no you can like this or that like there's nothing wrong in doing what you truly love.